The game went from a respected street rapper selling half a million albums in a week to becoming a punchline in the industry. And today we're breaking down how he fumbled it all and destroyed his own career. The game never planned on even being a rapper. He came up in Compton repping a blood set called the Cedar Block Pyros. And back then, he had both feet in the trenches. His parents were actually both Crips, but his older brother, Big Face, was high up in the Pyros and Game ended up joining the same set. Like most kids in Compton, Game's childhood wasn't easy. He spent six years in foster care, and when they finally let him go back to living with his mom, she didn't want anything to do with him. The game went deeper and deeper into the streets, and he says back then, he didn't go anywhere without three guns on him. He would even hoop with the gun in his waistband, but that didn't stop him from getting hit up. In 2001, Game got caught lacking and was shot five times. On the track from Adam, he talked about how it happened and said, There's usually 10 niggas in our dope spot. Cold ass night, I'm like a janitor at Wingstop. I usually play Xbox with the gun cocked. I'm cool with taking mine, but I took other niggas' gunshots. Chest wide open, I'm trying to fight, but my lungs not. Hole in my chest, about the size of a kumquat. He ended up going into a coma for three days and almost didn't make it out. But luckily, he made a full recovery and realized he had to switch up how he was moving. While he was laid up in the hospital recovering, Game told his brother to go out and get every classic rap album he could. For the next few months, all Game did was study the grades and practice writing his own raps. After he recovered, the game hopped in the booth immediately and dropped a mixtape with Big Face and then Game came out with his first solo tape and signed a deal with Get Low Records. Game had gone from not rapping at all to having a record deal within just a few months and everyone in the industry wanted a piece of him. Diddy wanted to sign him to Bad Boy Records, but Game decided to link up with Dr. Dre instead and signed to his Aftermath label. Dre is a West Coast legend, and for a Compton rapper like Game, it was a dream to get a deal on his label. Back then, 50 Cent was the hottest new artist in the world. His album Get Rich or Die Trying took over the whole rap game, so Dre and Jimmy Iovine decided to have Game link up with 50 and put him in G-Unit. Working with 50 was a huge win at first. While Game was working on his debut album, being affiliated with 50 and G-Unit put a ton of buzz on his name even though he didn't have an official project out yet. He showed up in the video for In The Club and was hopping on features. So by the time his debut album dropped, the game already had a ton of momentum behind him. The track Hate It or Love It with 50 Cent popped off like crazy and hit number two on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. And the only reason it didn't go number one is because 50's song Candy Shop was doing numbers at the same time. The Game and 50 Cent picked up two Grammy nominations for the track and it looked like they were going to be running the industry together for a long time. They were carrying the East and West Coast on their backs, and nobody could match the momentum they had back then. But instead of running up numbers together, they sparked a wild beef that led to a shootout in the middle of New York and did major damage to Game's career. 50 picked up a lot of clout in the industry back in the day by name dropping people on tracks like How To Rob. He's always been known for starting beef with other rappers. But Game didn't want issues with dudes he was cool with just because 50 had beef with them. These days, the Game is famous for starting beef out of nowhere just to get some shine on his name. But he fumbled the bag by crossing 50 Cent and ended up getting kicked out of G-Unit live on the radio. So where does he stand as far as G-Unit is concerned right Across now? Across the street or around the corner. He's not in my camp. Not at all? No way. Okay. Now, not after being that disrespectful. That's when Game and his crew rolled up to the radio station and got into a fight with 50's entourage. Game says there were like 30 dudes on each side, and at some point, they both started letting off shots in the street. Somehow, nobody was killed though, and only one dude caught a bullet in the leg. After everything went down, 50 claimed, I recorded six records on Game's new album. Right. I did West Side Story, How We Do, Hate It or Love It, Church for Thugs, Special, and Higher. You know, openly, I wouldn't expose what I did for the project, but I wrote those records. I created the, the concept of those records and he rapped around it. He's a great rapper. He's not a good songwriter. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Which and is, a, there's a difference. It's a major difference. Even though one of Game's homies had just been shot, 50 and the Game came together to squash their beef at a press conference. Fans clowned them both for faking everything for publicity since they both had albums dropping. But then the situation between Game and 50 heated up again and proved that the beef was real. 50 and G-Unit started sending shots at the Game. So he clapped back with a whole anti-G-Unit campaign called G-U-Not. Game also dropped a savage diss track called 300 Bars and Running, where he spent 15 minutes airing out 50 Cent and G-Unit. Falling out with 50 wasn't good for his career, but at that point, he still had a lot of momentum going. 50 said the game needed him to make hits, but then Game proved everyone wrong when he dropped his album Doctor's Advocate and debuted at number one for the second time in a row. 50 wasn't the only dude Game was beefing with though. He also sparked some drama with Jay-Z and Rockefeller Records. And on the track My Bitch, he sent shots at 50, Jay, and Suge Knight too. 
he went for 51st and said, let me tell you a story about this bitch I know. Grew up on the south side, sucking dicks for dough. Give her half a dollar, she'll put on a show. Do anything to be in a Dr. Dre video. Then he dissed Jay with, bougie bitch, whoever thought she was raised in BK. Moved out the hood, changed her name to Jay. Told everybody she'll be working with a mill one day. I was introduced to her back in 96. She had wavy hair and some big ass lips. At first, she was hard to hit. Come to find out, the last 10 years, she been sucking big dick. Game kept his name in the headlines for a while by dissing people and dropping controversial tracks. But the strategy wasn't gonna work forever. His fourth album still hit number two on the Billboard 200 chart, but it sold less than half of the copies in the first week as the documentary did. After it dropped, Game announced he was leaving hip hop to focus on his family. Fans were shocked at the news, but it didn't take long for him to come back. A lot of people said the retirement was just a publicity stunt and the game proved him right when he came back in 2009 with another album. He ended up linking up with Dre in Aftermath again after the whole 50 Cent situation finally calmed down. But not even Dr. Dre could help the game revive his career. Every album he dropped after that sold less and less even though he was getting all the hottest rappers in the industry on his records. It wasn't like Game's career was completely dead, but nothing he released picked up much buzz. Game is famous for name dropping and starting beefs to keep his name alive, and he sparked drama with everyone from Lil Durk to Kehlani. The Durk situation started after Durk and Game's homie Tyga started beefing. Game hopped on a diss track against Durk, and everything almost popped off when they ran into each other in a club. It looked like their crews were about to start something serious, but luckily the beef got squashed before anyone got hurt. The Game has been some deadly beef before, but getting into it with Dirk and everyone else in Chicago could have gone left for him real fast. Game also got clowned for jumping into Lil Wayne's beef with Young Thug. Wayne and Game have been tight for years, but fans still thought he should have minded his own business since he didn't have anything to do with the situation. In 2016, Game told fans that he was working on a new album and that it was going to be his last. A lot of people called Cap because of what happened last time, but when Game spent three years making the records, fans started to believe that he was actually going to put it out. He finally dropped Born to Rap in 2019. Critics actually loved the album, and Game got a lot of good reviews, but the problem was that nobody else listened to it. The album only sold around 23k in the first week and proved that Game had fallen off the map. And to make the situation even worse, he doesn't even get any of the royalties from the album because of a sexual assault case. Back in 2015, Game had a VH1 dating show called She Got Game, and a contestant on the show named Priscilla Rainey sued him for sexual assault. She was supposed to go on a date with Game for the show, but when she showed up, she claims Game was there with no production crew and he assaulted her while highly intoxicated on alcohol and drugs. The Game was ordered to pay her over 7 mil, but he refused to hand anything over. So in 2020, a judge granted her ownership of his prolific record label and all of the royalties for Born to Rap. It's not clear if Game's pockets were hurting over the lawsuit or if he actually wanted to retire in the first place but nobody was shocked when he announced that he was back in the studio working on a new project. He dropped it last August with features from superstars like NBA Youngboy and Kanye West, but even they couldn't save his sales and it became his worst performing album yet. Then he dropped a 10 minute diss track aimed at Eminem to try and get some buzz for the album, but that move just got him clowned by fans and other rappers. The game will probably always be involved with the rap industry, but it's clear that he'll never hit the same highs he did back in the day. A lot of OGs like him switch it up and start managing their own artists but Game's been trying to keep his own name alive with gimmicks and publicity stunts. There's nothing wrong with trying to get your career popping, but hopefully Game starts acting like the 43-year-old he is at some point instead of cloud chasing like a TikTok rapper.